Hey there, I'm Aggie, and you're here to learn more about Call of the Void. Wait, get out of my face! <laughs> there we go. In this deep dive, we'll be going over what exactly Call of the Void is, how it works, and what's included. This is a general overview, and if you'd like to know more about some of the specifics, I'll make more videos on several different topics later, so subscribe and click the bell to stay tuned. I first thought of Call of the Void almost four years ago, but only started really working on it when Subnautica content started to dry up about a year and a half ago. I mean, if we don't get new content, I'll just make it myself. <laughs> now, you've seen the trailer, I'm super proud of it, but what is Call of the Void? Call of the Void is a hypothetical Subnautica DLC. It was made to be something you could actually see the Subnautica devs come up with, in case they decided to create a DLC for the game. I think Subnautica has a bunch of unused potential, and I'm not just talking Leviathans. I think if they decided to make a DLC for the game, it would give it so much more replayability, and it would have been really cool to see, but I think it's a bit late for that now. Which is why I've come up with this. Specifically, I think the Void has a bunch of unused potential, so expanding on that was one of the main goals for this DLC, which is where the name Call of the Void comes from, because hey, you're going to the Void! Duh. I generally just wanted to expand on what I think the biggest strengths of Sonaga are, and in my opinion, those are exploration, submarines, and horror. But of course there would also be many more features and other creatures, and I have lots of ideas for unique horror encounters the player could have, but I don't want to spoil those too much. Of course, the tentacles and worm from the original trailer would be a part of these. My other goals for this DLC were adding new biomes and areas to the map, including new non-Leviathan creatures, because I think most people place too much focus on big scary leviathans alone without giving some well-deserved love to new kinds of fish and regular creatures, and like, the ecosystem as a whole. Also, adding new game mechanics, new technology and submarines, and expanding on the story of Subnautica was some goals as well. We wouldn't change the original story, just add onto it and explain some stuff in ways you might not have expected. But you of course also have to defend yourself against new aggressive creatures, leviathans and other threats. For that you can get some of the most sophisticated protection technology Altera has developed. NordVPN. <laughs> okay, but seriously, this project cost a huge amount of money and time, which we would not have been able to invest without Nord. Just like your submarine keeps you safe from the void, Nord keeps you safe online. You all probably know the basics of any VPN, you can virtually go anywhere in the world. This is especially useful with region lock content, like some shows on Netflix. I can't watch Lucifer on Netflix for example, but just one click in the Nord app and it starts working. Really helpful and saves me a ton of money for other streaming services. But Nord is more than just a VPN. Like I said, it keeps you safe online with threat protection, which blocks malware, trackers and ads. They now even have the NordPass password manager, and trust me, not having to remember every single password is a game changer. It even lets you generate your own secure passwords. And if one of your old passwords got leaked, it even tells you with the data breach scanner. If you're concerned about privacy, Nord's got you covered there too. They don't track your online activity and encrypt your connection. You can get an exclusive deal on a two-year plan with my link in the description, nordvpn.com slash AccuYT. Yeah, I don't know why they included the YT. <laughs> and if you change your mind, you can get your money back for 30 days. So again, if you'd like to support this project and the channel, click the link in the description. Huge thanks to Nord, we wouldn't have been able to do this without them. And let's get back to the video. What would Call of the Void actually change? First, we are retconning the meteor that crashed on the planet a long time ago. In the current game, you can find a small crater left by it in the dunes, which the architects used to build a cache in, and that's about it. Pretty boring stuff. In the new version, it was much bigger, and actually knocked off chunks of the crater into the void. There, some of them were supported by ancient floaters turning into underwater floating islands, each with a unique ecosystem and creatures. Before establishing the primary containment facility for the Emperor, the Precursors built several science outposts in what we're now calling the Void Clusters, to research unique crystals that formed on these islands. They hoped that these crystals would be the answer to curing themselves from the Kura, before they figured out the stuff with the Emperor. The islands vary in size, with bigger islands being further away from the crater and much deeper and harder to reach. Reaching deeper and further islands is tied to the progression system. Using the Cyclops, you would only be able to reach the first couple of islands, since, as you can see, the rest is way too deep. 
But for a better chance to get past the Ghost Leviathans in the Void, you'll also be able to craft a new Cyclops upgrade, the Stealth Module. This would allow you to become cloaked at a high energy cost, to reach those first few islands without becoming Leviathan food. There wouldn't be much on these, but you'll find a few resources and important blueprints to allow you to construct the Hydra Submarine. With which, he can go much deeper. So this is how they could be laid out. These are the first few islands you can actually reach with your Cyclops. Then over here are the first few islands you need the Hydra to reach. Then there's the next cluster you need to upgrade your Hydra to reach. And then there's another cluster you need even further upgrades to get to. As you can see, the further down and out you go, the bigger the islands get and the more interesting stuff you will find there. Of course, between all of these islands, there will be a lot of different anomalies and encounters you can have. And this is where the actual new gameplay starts. But how would you know where to go and where these islands are? For the first few islands, you will receive signals from various precursor facilities on the crater leading you to them. But the other ones, you will have to find using the Hydra Sona. This is a new game mechanic which we'll go over in detail in the Hydra Deep Dive. But the Sona basically will always show you a vague direction in which you can go to discover anomalies. Now, you don't know what exactly these anomalies are until you get close enough. Usually, it'll be an island. But it could also be something else. There are a few different types of anomalies which we will also go over in the Hydra Deep Dive video and you can expect that to come out in a couple of weeks. Using the sonar, you'll be able to explore deeper and further away islands to find ways to upgrade your submarine to go even deeper without getting lost in the void and of course survive stronger opponents and encounters. Of course you'll also find new creatures, new plants, new tech and learn more about what exactly the precursors were doing out there. If you want to know more about that, there will also be a deep dive video on the precursor facilities. So subscribe to see that as soon as it comes out and stuff. Or just check the end card to see all the deep dives that are out when you're watching this video. Of course, this is all hypothetical so far and there's no mod for it. Yet. But it all depends on you. If this video and series gets enough views and likes from people to show there's an actual interest in this mod, I'll get together a team of modders to make this a reality. Of course, with all these models for the trailer, we have a lot of the work done already. So if this is something you would like to see, make sure to let me know and share the video with your friends. After so many months of working on this project, I really want some feedback. So leave some comments with your thoughts or join my Discord server and let me know your opinion or ideas there. Now, getting back to the precursor facilities. For now, I'll tell you some basics. When they were built, the architects designed them as research and testing facilities to experiment on the different kinds of crystals and their effects, in hopes of finding something to cure the Kra. These crystals are a main part of the DLC, and you can make use of their unique properties too. So these facilities will be the main place for you to learn about new technology and how to use these crystals to your advantage. Your PDA will synthesize blueprints combining Altera and Precursor technology to make use of the crystals and any other resources on these islands, or you'll find fully functioning Precursor tech. I wanted to make these precursor bases a bit more interesting than the ones you're used to though, so you'll have more obstacles than just a few locked doors to get past to get through this technology and advance the story. And of course, the void is dangerous, so the precursors had to protect the facilities from the horrors in the dark. And hey, if you go deep enough, maybe you'll find a familiar face. And that's the general deep dive for Subnautica Call of the Void. Again, keep an eye out for future deep dives, like and share the video, and let me know what you think in the comments on my Discord server. This has been the biggest project of my entire life, so thank you so much to each and every one of you who supported me and shared it with their friends. But for now, thank you very much for watching, I really hope you enjoyed it, and as always, I'll see you next time. Goodbye!